Hello, welcome. I'm Jennifer Sienko, one of the directors of the National HPD Vaccination Roundtable. And I'm joined today by one of our co-chairs, Dr. Kristen Oliver, who is a pediatrician. And I'll let um, Dr. Oliver introduce herself. Hi. As Jen said, I'm a pediatrician and I'm also a preventive medicine physician at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. I do a lot of work around HPV vaccination and vaccines in general. So Dr. Oliver, you have been a part of the roundtable now for a few years and you are representing the American Academy of Pediatrics or AAP. Can you tell us a little bit about AAP and AAP's um, stance on vaccinations? AAP is an organization of pediatricians, and the main mission of AAP is to make sure that children everywhere have a, a healthy life um, from infanthood all the way through young adulthood. And as part of that, AAP feels really strongly that everyone needs their immunizations on time, um, according to the recommended schedule, starting again at birth um, and going through young adulthood. And one of those recommended vaccines is for human papillomavirus, or HPV part of adolescent vaccination. So everyone is really familiar with infant vaccines. And then there are a group of vaccines that uh, children need between the ages of like nine and 13. So um, what is AAP's stance on HPV vaccine? And what do you think about it as a doctor? Sure, so AAP certainly recommends the HPV vaccine and starting at age nine um, and up through the continuing catch-up age of 26. Ideally, you really wanna finish the series by the time the child is 13. And so that's why we like to recommend it starting at nine because you have enough time to make sure you've got that series in, in by then. So that vaccine is particularly important because we know it can prevent cancer, um, many different types of cancer caused by HPV. So we wanna make sure that ch children get that vaccine in on time as well, in addition to the other vaccines that we recommend at this age, which are the Tdap vaccine for tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, as well as a meningococcal vaccine. So we've been hearing a lot about vaccines in the news um, with COVID and a potential COVID vaccine. Um, during COVID, we've been advised to um, sort of pull back on our daily routines. And so we have maybe been putting off routine care, such as our well woman visits or our well child visits. So what do you want parents to know about routine vaccination during the COVID-19 era? Yeah, it's a great point. I know certainly for us in New York, there was a time in the spring during the peak surge where we were not recommending that children came to the office, right? A lot of offices were closed um, to prevent additional infections. Really fortunately, things have changed a lot since then. Certainly infection rates have gone down for COVID, but in addition, all of our practices were really able to put in measures in place to keep patients healthy while they're there um, to make sure that they do not contract the virus at the doctor's office. And because of that, now it's certainly important for everyone to come back who might have missed a vaccine during that time period, as well as any other well child check, um, and to continue with your regular scheduled care. Um, we know that vaccines are a really important way to prevent the infections that we can prevent right now with vaccines. And so we wanna make sure that everybody is getting those vaccines on time. So at the peak of COVID, a lot of people were putting off um, routine care, preventative care, well child visits. And um, now that we're being told it's okay to go back and to resume this care, what, how do we know that we're safe to go back into the office? Great question, right? Um, parents want, want to know this. I want to know this when I take my kids back to their pediatrician. So what I did is call and looked on their website to find out what they've been doing to make sure it was safe for my kids to come back. Um, and things that we've been doing in our practices and which lots of practices are doing as well are separating out the well child visits from the sick visits. And so they're being seen at different times of day um, and making sure everybody, no matter what, is wearing a face mask, both the patients and the families, as well as all of the staff, doing really great cleaning in between patients and also making sure that we're screening everyone before they come in for any potential COVID-like symptoms, both the patients as well as anyone that's coming in with them. We've also unfortunately had to limit the number of people that can come in for a visit. So not, not, now mom and dad can't both come in, right? We just have one parent come. So I'd recommend to everybody to go and call their pediatrician, um, their primary care doctor to see what they're doing in their offices. Almost all offices are taking steps like this to keep everybody safe um, and making sure people can come in and get these really important vaccines and also just the well child check, right? There's a lot 
that goes on in those visits for kids in terms of other screenings and assessments and growth um, that we wanna make sure it continues to happen even during the COVID pandemic. And so for parents who come in um, for those well child visits and they are generally going to get their vaccines, but maybe have a question about HPV. Why is HPV vaccine so important? Um, what would you say to those parents? I mean, the number one reason is because it prevents cancer. Um, and these are cancers that we can prevent in both the boys and girls for when they grow up. Um, so we prevent cervical cancer, oral pharyngeal cancer, anal cancer, cancer, as well as a number of other cancers. And so it's really important to get this vaccine on time. Um, it, we know that it's more effective the earlier we can complete the series. Um, so we really want to make sure that this vaccine is one of the ones that everyone receives on time. And if I'm a parent and I'm looking for additional information about vaccines in general or about the HPV vaccine, what are some websites or resources that I should be looking at? Yep. So I'm partial to the Roundtable's website. The HPV Roundtable website has a great list of information and resources for parents as well as for pediatricians and other doctors who are looking for information. I also always go to the CDC and I like the Immunization Action Coalition has a lot of great resources as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today and um, we'll see you next time. My pleasure. <laughs>